Chinese web design. It's weirdly cluttered, but it works. Here's why. This is a widely used news site owned by Sina, a tech company with over 583 million monthly users. Crazy hyperlinks, flashy images, cat. It's 2025, and one of the largest social media platforms in China chooses this design? Weishima. Also, from comments under my Chinese app design video, it seems like people don't actually like this cluttered UI. So why is it still here? After reading on the internet history of China, research papers, and web design articles, I'll answer these questions. How is cluttered design an economic decision? How does Chinese culture influence this design preference? How does language impact this? And finally, how might all of this affect us? It's time to dive into the design psychology of Chinese websites. To understand why this works, we gotta look at why it needed to be cluttered in the first place. It was originally an economic decision. If you're 30 and above, what I'm about to tell you will be extremely nostalgic. And if you're under 30, allow me to introduce the grueling process of getting internet in early 2000s. At this time, if you wanted to get access to internet in China, you had to install one, a wired telephone, and two, a modem, a thing that looks like a router, but works in a different way. Then you can access the internet via dial-up, which is essentially a process of getting the internet through a phone call. In a nutshell, it works like this. Yay, we have internet. Oh crap, it's slow as f- In China, data usage was extremely expensive. Browsing a few web pages could easily amount to a few hundred yuan in telephone bills. Uh, you're gonna make this money back when you grow up, right? Hmm. For economic reasons, Chinese websites used to load everything at once to conserve data. They needed to keep costs low. Imagine if one of these bad boys existed in China at that time. Before the animation has finished loading, the telephone bill would have already costed more than a meal at Haidi Lao. It was way more cost effective to load everything all at once. Good UX and product design is way more than the aesthetics. It's how the product works within the confines of tech and business constraints. Okay, but that was 20 years ago. There is enough data now. So why do websites still look like this? Just like Indian web design, Mobile leapfrogging is another critical reason why Chinese websites still look like this. Mobile, mobile what? Let me explain. Compared to personal computers, phones were cheap. While Western countries were gradually shifting from PC to phones, China made that shift rather abruptly because they realized with cheaper mobile phones, it was easier to bridge the digital divide between rural and urban cities. Whether you're a billionaire, a white collar working a nine to five, or a villager, you could access the internet. Da kai yan jie means to widen your horizons. This was a da kai yan jie moment. Very quickly, China shifted to a mobile-centric user base, which means most of the UX UI innovations and trends were seen on mobile apps. And it was awesome, since these user-friendly designs make tech intuitive, even for those who never used technology before. Not many tech newbies wanted to learn on the PC because... For many newcomers, PC stands for pain and confusion. How the hell do you do this? Mobile leapfrogging. By leaping over this desktop phase, Chinese web design bypassed trends that redefined web design in other parts of the world. There was simply not enough time or reason to adopt these newer UI trends. Okay but that still doesn't fully explain this information-dense interface. Let's talk about culture. Within Chinese culture, people have been accustomed to clutter, more specifically, to dense information. For example, check out these menus, marriage posters, storefront decoration. The desire for this dense information stems from the cultural preference of more information, because more information means more trust. It's reassuring to users that every functionality of the website is shown in plain sight. Based on my experiences, Chinese culture is quite value-driven. If a website gets the job done, whether it's helping them purchase something, read the news, find a tutoring center that gives you the most bang for your buck, sure, clutter is not preferred. But if it gets the job done, 
Who cares? As one of you eloquently phrased, Chinese apps are like a messy university student dorm room. Everything is a chaotic mess, but you know exactly which pile of books the scissor is under. In a cross-cultural study conducted by the Niels Norman Group, they showed minimal website designs to Chinese participants. One of them said, it's simple, clean, with no ads, and no useless information. But the problem is, while it doesn't have any useless information, I can find nothing useful in these simple links. Now, personally, I can share a story of why it can be a joy to use these cluttered websites. This is 4399, a website for online games. When I was in elementary school in China, the education system was pretty intense. I'm talking standard exams since grade two. So every day, coming home from school, 4399 was the light at the end of the tunnel. I was happy that it was cluttered because that meant I had all of these games at my fingertips. Nothing was hidden, so many games to choose from. So when we want information, oftentimes it's a delight to see a more information dense page. But that doesn't explain why the flashy banners and images. Well, to explain this, let's look at the Chinese language, specifically its typography and font constraints. In Latin languages like English, you can capitalize, italicize, bold, the same word, and it looks very different. But for the Chinese language, capitalization and italicizing doesn't even exist. Bolding doesn't make that much of a difference. Without these elements, it makes it harder for Chinese web designers to create visual hierarchy. So other methods, such as flashy images and colors, need to be introduced to create a sense of contrast. But clutteredness does not mean bad UX design. Chinese people are people and not some kind of superhumans who violate the laws of user interface psychology. For example, this is the Chinese website for the Overwatch computer game. Can you find the navigation? Here? Here? No, it's here. Did you find it? Because not a single one of the five Chinese users who tested this found it. So yeah, certain user interface principles should not be broken. There's no need to be quirky about them. Clutterness might be okay, but bad UX design is not. What can we learn? Oftentimes, minimalism isn't the go-to way to do things. How can we conserve usability, but still present enough information for the user? Now these minimal design trends are going to China as well, but in general, People are happy with this because it works. How can we better design our products to localize for a specific user group? And if you're a builder, designer, software developer, you want to ask, how can we understand different cultures? Who are we designing for and what are their preferences? Because it's understanding that fosters appreciation. I mean, if you want to start understanding Chinese culture, you should check out Red Note. It's a party over there. Day one of using Red Note, you know what I'm saying? Day three of uh, using uh, Red Note. 第七天在这个平台,就两个字, newbie! Living in discovery is at all times preferable to living through assumptions. So, what do you think about this design? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Or, in your eyes, is it even cluttered?